So when our twins graduated high school, Regina said she didn't want a big old SUV anymore because we didn't need to carry the kids around. She wanted something different. So I had a Volkswagen Bug, a 73 Super Beetle in high school, and I loved it. And so um, I wanted something that was fun to drive, um, definitely a lot smaller. I didn't need to lug around boys in football gear, um, something that I could take off-road and join you on your adventures. Um, but I had some very clear specifications once I decided on a Wrangler. I wanted two doors. I wanted it to be yellow in memory of my Bug. I wanted it to be all yellow, so the, the roof, the fenders, uh, I wanted all the bells and whistles, leather seats, and you told me it was going to be impossible to find such a thing. Yeah, uh, so we did find a unicorn, this 2018 <laughs> Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. You found it. I found it. Two weeks later. And uh, look, there's this big debate out there that two-door Jeeps are the only real Jeep and four-door Jeeps aren't real Jeeps. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about why a two-door is better than a four-door and why it's not. And we're gonna share with you some of the challenges we've had with this 2018 model. So now fast forward three years later from when we bought this, 54,000 miles and this Jeep, you know, this Jeep doesn't have a name. All our vehicles have a name. I've <laughs> oh got boy. a Rista. Here I've got we go. Ivan, I've got Wallace. Where the Jeep needs to is have a the name. requirement that a Jeep has to have a name? All Why? cool vehicles need to have a name. It's a thing. I, ever since I was a kid, I named all my cars, my grandparents' <laughs> cars, my dad, I named Pretty his car. cars. Yeah. Yeah. A name is something you don't just decide on. It has to fit. It has to own it. All right. Maybe we'll come up with something during this video. Okay. So fast no, forward, <laughs> fast forward three years, 54,000 miles. And, you know, we were genuinely worried that this was the first model JL that came out. Was it going to have problems? And, well, we went to the dealership for major issues for these things right here. So that's right. We haven't had any major issues that we've had to take this back to the dealership to yeah, have fixed. Pretty amazing. And there are, there are a couple things that, you know, We've noted, and we're gonna talk about that here in a second, and then we're gonna get into the debate about why a two-door is better than a four-door. Because it is. So one of the things that I just can't stand on vehicles is plastic. I think a vehicle should be metal and it should be painted, and plastic just is not something I've been a fan of, especially because most of the time it fades, and I know manufacturers say they're UV protected, but in my experience, typically, over time, plastic fades, and Check out this cowl right here. This is only three years old and it's already starting to turn gray. Now, you can get that black plastic uh, enhancer that will make it shine up again, but over about a month or two, it will fade back. And I don't know what the difference is because if you look at the hood louvers here and these pieces of plastic up here, they're actually still pretty black, but this faded. And you know what? When I did the initial review of this, I called it. My only criticism about the hood is where the windshield wipers are. That little cowl section, it's black plastic. I would have really liked to have had that been painted, color matched. I'm not a big fan of plastic. So that's just one thing that we've noted since we've gotten this Jeep. So many Jeep owners are going to relate with this one, and that is the windshield of the Jeep. It's got some challenges. Now, they did make an improvement with the JL model by leaning the windshield back a little more to improve aerodynamics but it has not improved the amount of cracks it gets. No, we've had, this is my third windshield. Um, probably about once a year, it seems like we're replacing it, which is kind of sad because the original windshield had the little Easter egg, the cute little Jeep on it. And um, as much as we've replaced it, we're just not paying the extra money to have a little Jeep. Yeah, so if you go with the Mopar window that has the little Easter egg Jeep, that's $1,000 versus a $600 generic one. And now having replaced it three times, well, it's just not worth it. Now, the great thing is Jeep offers a Gorilla Glass option. It's a $195 option straight from the factory. And I think to rewind in time, if it was available then, we would have done it, but it wasn't available at the time. So we're stuck with this for now. Maybe we'll upgrade to Gorilla Glass in the future. So the last problem we've noticed, and it's only happened in the past month, is the door to the gas tank has come off. It completely pops out every time I pump gas, and we have to snap it back into place. So um, it's worked so far, but we may have to replace it in the future. So those things are a little annoying, but 
Other than regular maintenance, it hasn't had to go to the dealership for any warranty work, which has been really nice. Yeah. Now, why is a two-door better than a four-door? Because I think a lot of folks out there are trying to consider, should they get a two-door or should they get a four-door? So we're gonna go through why it is and why it's not, and then we'll start off with the why it is. So okay. starting off with the price. This two-door Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, compared to the four-door counterpart, is $3,500 cheaper. That's a lot, that's a lot, significant savings. Plus, it's 227 pounds lighter, which makes it feel a little faster. I don't know exact zero to 60 times, but it mattered to you when you test drove it. Oh, it did. I wanted it to have some get up and go, and if it didn't have any oomph when I test drove it, I wasn't gonna get it, Yeah, and it did. Jeeps aren't fast, but a two-door <laughs> definitely feels a little it more- It goes when I need it to. It feels a little more zippy than a four-door, to be honest, and I yeah. like driving it. It's fun. Uh, fuel mileage for the two-door is rated by Jeep at 25 miles per gallon on the freeway versus a four-door, which is only 23 miles to the gallon. Now, I don't think you've ever seen either <laughs> one of those. Hey. <laughs> it got kind of a heavy foot. But a little bit. The potential there for you know 25 miles to the gallon is there. I see it when I reset my you know fuel counter thingy after yeah. I pump gas. I've never seen it when I've driven her Jeep. Um, <laughs> but look, you're gonna get better fuel economy with the Jeep. So there's two big reasons right there. You're gonna feel a little more zippy and you're going to get better uh, fuel mileage. But the big thing for you about this Jeep, and you say it all the time, is? The turning radius. Yeah, this thing has amazing turning radius. So comparatively, this is 17.3 feet of turning radius versus the four-door, which is 20.4 feet of turning radius. And those numbers sound interesting, but we did a little comparison here. So let's show you what that looks like. Okay, our method for showing you the turning radius difference between these two Jeeps is not really scientific. It was just pretty raw. Now, Regina's Jeep is not stock. It's on 35s with a two and a half inch lift, and mine is on 37s with a three and a half inch lift. So this is not a true comparison test like you would get if they were both stock Jeeps. But we were out there just doing some donuts just to kind of see what the turning radius was like, and Regina's was definitely tighter. But we wanted to do something that could show you, and so we actually put some gas cans out there as markers and did a 180 degree turn. You can see here, Regina was pretty tight. And then as I went and did it, there was turning as hard as I could with that steering wheel. I was still about three to four feet away from where she ended up. So there's a pretty significant difference there. So you can see there is a significant advantage from the two door to the four door. And I'm a little jealous because it's just so much easier for you to park it. It is. Um, this was my daily driver, as we've mentioned. And when I was commuting every day and working on base, where parking is at a premium, it was pretty easy for me to just zip into a spot with minimal effort. Yeah, and we've been to the grocery store. And it's super easy to find parking. And then parallel parking is a breeze <laughs> in this thing. Yeah. It's almost cheating. It is. But that translates on the trail as well. So when you're out on a tight technical trail, a two-door and it's so much more maneuverable than a four-door. And the other key thing, it's a huge advantage for the two-door is the breakover angle. So the wheelbase on a two-door is 96 inches versus 118 inches on a four-door. Now there's pros and cons to both. Typically a two-door with a shorter wheelbase is gonna do great on tight technical trails like the Rubicon. Uh, but for that time I was on the trail with you and Marco and we had to turn around. I just did basically a U-turn right. while I waited for you guys to do a 20 point turn or yeah. something okay. like that. Okay, maybe not 20 points. <laughs> <laughs> but we definitely had to do a multiple point turn where she could just zip around. Uh, but in places like Moab where there's steep inclines, that's where a short wheelbase can become a little bit of a disadvantage because having that longer wheelbase makes it easier to get up and over. So I think that's a good segue as to why a four door is better than a two door. Okay, now we're gonna talk about why a two door uh -huh. is not better than a four door. <laughs> and hopefully this little yellow two door that does not have a name doesn't hey, get mad nice. at me. Uh, but the big thing is not so big in a two-door <laughs> is storage. So there is 12.9 cubic feet of storage in a two-door versus 31.7 cubic feet in a four-door. There's a lot less storage in this little Jeep. I mean, look but at this little pocket. Needs. It suits my needs. Talk about that for a second. Well, okay, so this is perfect if you're just getting a few things at the grocery store or you know, you just have a couple of random things to put in here. It's plenty of room. If I need more space, it's really easy to flip this back 
super easy. And as long as I'm putting stuff here, like a bunch of groceries or some large items, it's fine. But if I'm taking Rocket to the vet, it is a little problematic and one of the things I don't like about it because there's nothing securing this in place. And so what I have to do is these little straps are what would secure it in place. And so then I have to walk all the way around, first passenger side, then the driver's side, and, and hook these up to the little metal thing my bobs. Yeah, unlike a four-door where those seats just lay flat. Plus, this doesn't... This doesn't open up the entire back, right? You, it's still taking up quite a bit of space. So, you know, I really think we could just uh, no. get rid of this seat. No. Don't need it. No. Nobody sits back so, here. So, okay, again, as I was saying, if I am just getting a few things at the store, this contains it. It's not flying around right. some big back open space. And then there's my purse okay. because when he's not driving with me, my purse sits in the passenger seat and I can get to everything. When he's driving with me, well, my purse has to go somewhere that I can reach it. And that's what the back seat is for. All right, guys, for you guys out there <laughs> that are considering a two-door or four-door, the first thing doesn't matter for ladies. That's important. That's important stuff. Now, uh, storage is a big item, but leg room is another one. But I didn't get this for storage or leg room. Now, talking about that back seat, uh, I'm six foot two, and climbing back here is not easy without an extra door to make it happen. You've got to crawl in here very tightly to get back there. There is 35.7 inches of leg room in this, which sounds like a lot, but the 38.3 in the Wrangler four door is a lot more, plus, because it has more hip room. But you have to remember, this was my downsizing because my kids are all grown up vehicles. So I'm not hauling my teenagers around. I'm not putting a car seat in the back. Um, I think I've maybe had folks in the back seat like less than a dozen times in the past three years, usually coworkers sitting in the back as we went to lunch. Yeah. So for a short ride, it's fine. Yeah, short ride, it's fine. I definitely would not want to be in the back of there for long trips. And a reminder, this is a four passenger vehicle versus a four door, which is a five passenger vehicle. Now I mentioned that the fuel economy miles per gallon is better with the two door, but unfortunately it has a smaller gas tank. So it's only 17 and a half gallons versus a 21 and a half gallon on the four door. And that's going to give you about 60 miles less range. So just something to think about if you're going to be doing long trips, you're going to have to fill up a little more often on the two door. Now, the other thing is ride comfort because this is a shorter wheelbase. Typically, it's not as comfortable as a longer wheelbase vehicle like a four-door. What are your thoughts on how this rides? Uh, I think it's fine. I understand this is not a luxury car. I'm not driving a BMW <laughs> or anything like that. Um, and maybe I'm just less, I don't know, sensitive to, to it, but I love driving my Jeep, so yeah. it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Even with the bigger tires, I'm good. Yeah, we, I mean, we've modified both our vehicles. So these have larger tires and a tuned suspension that's tuned specifically for this vehicle. But as a general rule, longer wheelbase vehicles are gonna be more comfortable because there's more duration from the time the front wheel hits a bump to the rear tire hitting a bump. The more journey that it takes for that to happen, the more time the suspension has to settle. And because things are a little tighter on the two door, sometimes the front is not settled as that rear one is uh, starting to hit that bump. And so you feel a little more a uh, little more of the roughness on the road than you would a longer wheelbase, but you've never complained about all that. So <laughs> I never knew any of that. So. <laughs> well, she just learned something. Yeah. There. <laughs> and I'm mostly driven on the freeway too. So. This is true. Yeah. Well, yeah. But typically longer wheelbase vehicle like a four door is going to be more comfortable than a two door. So another downfall of the two door versus the four door is towing capacity. So the two door only has 2000 pounds of towing, whereas the four door has 3,500 pounds of towing. Now compared to a truck that gets six, seven, 10,000 pounds, that's not a lot. But for us, it's actually worked out well. We did tow with the two door for a little while. We had a little Patriots Camper X2 trailer. It did a pretty good job. Oh, it was great. I drove it on the trail and it was completely maneuverable and I had no problems with it whatsoever. Yeah, there's something to be said about a short wheelbase vehicle and a lightweight short trailer actually did really, really well. So what's the problem? <laughs> so the problem is, is that we upgraded our trailer, which now weighs a little more, actually dry, it weighs about 1,800 pounds. And once we put all our gear, fill it with water, the two-door can't tow it anymore. So we can only tow it with the four-door. So, so 
We get another lightweight little trailer and I can tow it and problem solved. We don't have room for another trailer. No, we don't. <laughs> and we love this one. We so. do. We love it a lot. So towing is a downfall. Another issue with a two-door is manufacturers don't produce as many aftermarket support for the Jeep two-door as they do a four-door. And look, we all like to customize our Jeeps. The challenge is finding two-door specific things like a roof rack, storage. Sometimes it can be tough. So you're saying I can never have a rooftop tent on this little thing? Well, there's some support out there for a roof rack that can get a rooftop tent, but you don't have the same type of choices that you do for a variety okay, of Okay, but I can four. still do it. Not a problem. You could still do it. <laughs> Although the problem is that shorter wheelbase, putting that weight up tall it, on a two-door, it's just not the best maneuver. So we're not going to do that in the near future, but there are things to think about. You know, if you want to do some upgrades on your Jeep, like roof racks or storage, or specifically a lift kit, you want to make sure that you get a lift kit that's specific to a two door because it doesn't weigh as much and the handling is going to be a little different. You can't put a four door kit on a two door. So those are some things to think about when, uh, when you're doing that. But if you want to make minimal modifications, you don't want to add all the stuff to it. You want to keep it relatively stock. You're good. You're good. All right. Okay. Now we're going to talk about something that Regina is super knowledgeable about, and that's the <laughs> engines of the Jeep Wrangler, right? Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not so much, but here's the deal with the Jeep Wrangler. There are all kinds of models and engine options that you can choose from, but when you get a two door, really narrows some of those options. So let's talk about that for a second. So you can get a two door in a Sport, a Sport S, a Willys or Willys S or a Rubicon model. You can't get it in the Sahara. You can't get it in the hybrid 4XE plug-in. You can't get it in a 392, which is the one that's all, all kinds of horsepower. So we got you the Rubicon because it mm -hmm. comes with a lot of the bells and whistles, which you like. Right. And it's got the off-road capability, which you wanted because you wanted mm -hmm. off-road this. So that's why we went with the Rubicon, but you don't have the option of choosing some of those others. The other thing is the engine options. Sorry. <laughs> She's yawning. <laughs> so the two-door you can only get in a six-speed manual uh, or eight-speed automatic with the 3.6 or the two liter turbo. You cannot get a two door with a diesel. You can't get it in the hybrid and you can't get it in the V8 uh, 392, which- Can't, can't, can't. Yeah, you can't. Uh, but I'll tell you, if 392 was an option, <laughs> that V8 is an option, oh, yeah. I think we'd be trading this oh, thing yeah, in for a yellow two door. <laughs> so something to think about as you're choosing your vehicle, your option limitations straight from the factory are gonna be a little limited in the two door. So is a two-door better than a four-door? Well, I think there's pros and cons to each and the debate's gonna live on, but I think if you have a family and you need that storage, the four-door is probably a better way to go. To be honest, when the boys were little, when we had a booster seat and three car seats and five passengers, this definitely would not have worked. But for me, right now, it is perfect and it is better than a four-door option. Yeah, she's smiling all the time when she's driving this and watching her on the trail maneuver this thing around, she makes it look easy, so it's pretty cool. So there you go, guys. <laughs> Hopefully this was informative and if you're trying to decide whether or not to buy a two-door or four-door, you've gotten a little bit of information here that might help you make an informed decision. If you have not subscribed to Trail Recon, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team and make sure you visit us over at trailrecon.com. We've got all kinds of great gear over there. Thanks for watching.